Good morning, gang. Happy Friday morning. <clears throat> okay. Paying attention. Okay. Situational awareness. Watching what's going on. Might get a little bit more important. And I'm not talking about terrorism or lunatics trying to shoot up a bar or a bowling alley or a nightclub or a school or anything like that. I'm talking about bigger. And are we, as a country, quietly getting ready to go to war? Hmm, why would you say that? And little things have a tendency to start to build middle, bigger things. So, not that I paid too much of attention to it, <clears throat> but yesterday me and Mrs. P were going to grocery shopping. And on the way into town, we passed a small military convoy. Okay. Uh, okay. Hey, kind of cool. Haven't seen one in a long time, but you know, I'm like said to Mrs. P, I'm like, where the hell are they coming from, and where are they going to? I mean, there's no military bases around me, guys. None. Okay. You know, we're talking long way just to get to a Air National Guard base. So it's like, all right, why are they coming? And the tra this direction they were traveling was south from Kentucky toward Knoxville. Didn't pay attention to it too much until I got home and I got an email from one of y'all that was one little piece that kind of threw me for a second. The headline, military.com, so this is definitely a reputable source, okay, headline, the Army suddenly and chaotically told hundreds of soldiers they have to be recruiters immediately. 800 NCOs, non-commissioned officers, sergeant and above. Yeah, you could say corporal, I guess. All right, but for the purpose of this, it's sergeants. Are, have been told they have six days to report to Fort Knox for training to be a military recruiter. Six days. Okay. Imagine your boss coming into you right now and saying, Joe, you're transferred. In six days, I need you to show up in Kentucky ready to work. Now, granted, the military is expected to deploy quickly. Okay? But you're talking about Moving a family, moving... I mean, if you're a single guy living in a barracks, not a big deal, okay? You pack up your duffel bag, maybe a suitcase or two with some civvies you got in it, and you go. If you're married and have a kid, you know, live in an apartment or on base housing or something, it might be a little bit more difficult. So all of a sudden, now the wife is left back at the old post trying to coordinate getting you over there. Oh, by the way, yeah, you have six days to find living arrangements, too. These 800 new recruiters are expected to recruit eight, uh, 24 recruits a year, okay? So if you do the math, that means they are these 800 new recruiters are expected, expected to recruit some 20,000 new soldiers, they're taking drill sergeants, people that have passed drill sergeant school, and making them recruiters. Why all of a sudden the big push to bring in military personnel, right? To get new, new troops. You go back to another article that military.com put up back in July. They entitled this one, we needed a military, a limited military draft, okay, to explain the shortcomings, you know, to overcome the shortcomings that the military has at this point, okay? So you're starting to get, and I'll link all this below so you guys can read the articles. Uh, but so you're now starting to get a little bit of worry in the Pentagon about being short manpower, okay, with everything going on in Ukraine, with everything going on in Israel, potential of everything going on in Taiwan, southern border, not that active duty can do anything about the southern border, but 
Just saying. Maybe there's something going on. And even then, I'm like, okay. We're just trying to increase the troop level because the military, you know, the Army missed their quota this year by 25%. And so they need to get more people to do more recruiting to get more bodies, right? Until I read this. So this came out this morning. <sighs> Veterans Day is in a week. Okay, well, eight days from today. And around Veterans Day, the Marine Corps holds their annual ball. And the Marine Corps ball is one of the biggest, most anticipated, looked forward to traditions in the Marine Corps. Okay? It's a formal event by invitation only. It's a privilege to go to this uh you know, they've done it for 247 years. Except this year. C.A. Mc, uh, McPhillips, the CENTCOM commander, posted this letter yesterday. I hope this letter finds you in good health and high spirits. Regretfully and with a strong sense of duty, I write to inform you of a decision I had to make regarding the Marine Corps 248th ball, scheduled for 16 November 2023. Due to unforeseen operational commitments and the nature of our current mission, it is with great regret that we must cancel this year's event. For the Marine Corps to cancel the Marine Corps ball is big. But the key words are the last sentence. Due to unforeseen operational commitments and the nature of our current mission. Well, the only way something's unforeseen is if it comes up as a surprise. Okay? And I hate to tell you this, there ain't a whole lot in the military that's ever a surprise. Everything is very well planned out in advance. Hell, at this point... You know, we tell our enemies when we're going to bomb them, right? Okay. So this means it was something that was beyond the military's control. I don't know, like a war starting in the Middle East? Okay. Commitments. What are we committed to? The nature of our current mission. Hmm. Have we been told what the current mission of the Marine Corps is? I haven't. I haven't seen anywhere. Not that I've got a red phone on my desk, you know, from the Pentagon. But what's going on? Why are things changing? You know, you start adding little bits of it. I saw something yesterday uh, online. Uh, Monkey Works puts out all these maps of airplanes in the sky. You know, there's a few channels that do it, right? There was one channel that put it out yesterday. We had an unprecedented number yesterday of military aircraft in the sky over the United States. What's going on? Are they getting ready to send troops somewhere? You know, Iran came out yesterday and said that Israel will be annihilated if they don't cease fire in, in Gaza. You have all these politicians, some of them, calling for ceasefires. A ceasefire in Hamas or in Gaza is a win for Hamas. All that does is give them a chance to regroup, retool, and do it all over again. The only way that we are going to end this is to permanently end Hamas, which I have a feeling might be our plan, our U.S.'s plan. Most of this country still has a real, real bad taste in their mouth about Islamic terrorists. 
and I don't care if it's because of the 93 World Trade bombing. I don't care if it's because of 9-11. There's not a whole lot of sympathy for their cause. Sure, there are some idiots out there who believe the Palestinians are right. Some are even in Washington. Okay. <clears throat> The two-state solution. I mean, I've always got a question about the two-state solution. Why not parts of Egypt? Why not parts of Jordan? Why don't Egypt and Jordan even want to take any of the Palestinian refugees? Oh, that's right. They don't trust them either. Okay. <clears throat> but pay attention, guys. They're, watch and see what you see about military movement, military stories that you run across, okay? I looked at a lot of sources, but you guys do catch stuff before I do and share it, and I appreciate that. But let's pay attention to what's going on, because could we wind up in, even if it's a regional war? Yeah. But like I said, you start getting Iran gets involved, or we get involved, and Russia gets involved, or China gets involved, and this is just like how other wars start. It's small, and then everybody gets involved, and then it's WW3. Good morning.